My name is Kevin Green. I'm a PhD student at Oregon State University, and today I'm talking about my recent work on explicitly optimizing robust behavior in the context of leg locomotion. I'm really interested in creating agile and robust leg locomotion, particularly for bipedal robots like Cassie shown here. These robots are high dimensional, non-linear, go through hyper transitions, and operate in unknown environments. To make real-time planning feasible, a common approach is to use reduced order models, such as the inverted pendulum model. These models capture the idea that walking robots are well described as a center of mass whose motion is influenced only by gravity and the ground reaction forces from the feet. Much of my research focuses on the spring-loaded inverted pendulum model. This model can recreate the ground reaction forces of both human walking and running as shown in the figure below. Here, the black curves represent real test data from humans walking and running, and the red curves represent the ground reaction forces the models will recreate. It is also useful as a motion guide for full order robots in hardware. However, when we add an actuator in series with the compliance, this model not only recreates the locomotion patterns of humans and animals, but it actually will reject ground height and ground impedance disturbances with only an open loop plan. This led us to the question, how robust could this model be with the best choice of open loop actuator trajectory? To help answer this question, we developed a method of explicitly solving for motions that reject ground height disturbances without sensing and reacting for forward planar locomotion. For this work, we are using the planar actuated slip model. This model has a point mass body and a single leg that consists of an extensible actuator in series with a damp spring. This model has two avenues of control actions. First, it can control the touchdown leg angle once per step. Second, it can command an acceleration to the leg actuator throughout all of the motion. The open loop plan we seek describes both of these. Actuator acceleration is a function of time, and leg touchdown angle is a function of time. The leg touchdown angle changing as a function of time describes leg swing behavior which we see in human running. We use direct collocation trajectory optimization to find the motion and control inputs. First, we start at an apex state, which is where the body has zero vertical velocity, go through a touchdown hybrid transition, progress through stance until it lifts off the ground, and then ascend back to apex. In direct collocation, we then discretize the states and control actions throughout each of the hybrid phases. A coarse discretization is shown here in pink. Then, to ensure the dynamics are satisfied, we apply a constraint between adjacent states to enforce a one-step numeric integration. In this work, we use trapezoidal collocation. To reject a disturbance in ground height, we would like to optimize over several different scenarios. These scenarios will have different states, but will need to have the same control inputs as a function of time. If we could ensure that all the discretization points align, then there would be no problem. However, in this problem, the hybrid transitions ensure that the state discretization will not align. Imagine here we have three different ballistic descents. Each one is going to contact the ground at a different time. We discretize each of these motions and we can see how far apart states with corresponding indices are in time. If we look again at three linked scenarios shown now in red, green, and blue, it is clear that if we naively link the first point's control inputs together and the second point's together and so on, that we will have different control policies. Since we are trying to find a single control policy, we need to ensure that each of these scenarios uses the same inputs as a function of time. Our solution is to use a parent actuator plan, shown here in black. Then we apply a differentiable interpolation operator to constrain each of the control inputs to the parent actuator plan. For details on the specific constraint and its Jacobian, please take a look at our paper. The final problem that we solve is to optimize for five ground heights, nominal, plus and minus 0 0.05 times the nominal leg length, and plus or minus 0 0.1 times the nominal leg length. Specifically, the solution is constrained to exactly reject the disturbance while minimizing integrated actuator acceleration squared. This is a relatively common minimum effort objective. In practical terms, this is equivalent to minimizing the amount of energy lost to resistive heating in an electric motor. We define rejecting the disturbance as the robot ending up in the same apex state 
relative to the new ground for each disturbance case. There's a really interesting discussion to have here about if this is the correct definition of rejecting ground height, and if you have a strong opinion about this and would like to discuss it, please message me. As a comparison, we will also optimize a flat ground scenario for integrated actuator acceleration squared. We convert the direct collocation problem into a sparse nonlinear optimization problem, which is then solved using IPOPT. To evaluate the optimization results, we generate motion plans for 625 sets of initial states and final goal states. The mean time to solve was 4.3 seconds, and 95% of successful solutions were solved in under 8.9 seconds. This is too slow for real-time control, but as a tool for offline gate development, it's perfectly usable. We can see then the top plot that all five initial heights converge back to the same final height and forward velocity. Each trajectory has a different touchdown angle, becoming steeper for later touchdowns. The second plot shows that as the different disturbance cases touch down, the leg is actually already extending in length. All the trajectories lift off at different points in time as the leg reaches its peak extension. In the ground reaction force plot at the bottom, we can see that the later the touchdown, the greater the peak vertical force. This intuitively makes sense because it should require a larger vertical impulse to reverse the vertical velocity of the body and return it back to the final desired height. Let's compare this to the minimum effort optimization. We can see that the robust optimization lets the body drop much lower than the minimum effort optimization. I think this is because the minimum effort optimization is using the damper in the leg to regulate the amount of energy in the system, and a longer, lower stance phase helps it do that. To ensure that these policies are truly robust to ground height variation and not just exploiting the constraints of the optimization, we verify with a separate simulation. We extract the control policy for the leg length actuator and the swing leg from the optimization, then forward simulate that for 11 different ground height variations. The simulation we use is based on MATLAB's ODE45 with event detection. To make it a fair comparison with the minimum effort optimization, we give the minimum effort optimization a ground speed matching leg swing policy. This means that the robot will move the leg backwards, keeping it above a single point on the ground. This is significantly better for disturbance rejection compared to holding a constant leg angle. Looking at an example simulation result for both of these policies, we see drastically different results. All of the robust apex states in this example have less than 1 1,000th of the nominal leg length for error in the final height and 1 1,000th of the forward velocity error in the final forward velocity. Looking at the results of all the simulations, we observe that 14% of the disturbances caused the minimum acceleration policy to fail. This happened because the body contacted the ground before it reached the next apex state. None of the tested disturbances caused the robust policy to fail. When comparing the final state error of the conditions where the minimum acceleration policy didn't fail, the robust policy had on average 43 times less height error and 81 times less velocity error. We presented a new method to create open loop plans for an actuated spring-loaded inverted pendulum model that are extremely robust to ground height uncertainty. These robust plans have features that we see in biological observations such as swing leg retraction. The robust plans are slower to calculate compared to more conventional methods, but my hope is that in the future, they will be useful in finding robust action primitives that we can use in real-time planning and control.